what a great day to discuss this when FIFA is streaming live and we're all watching it live. And as uh, Gavin just before us spoke about, uh, you know, uh, live stream is the mainstream. I think big words and very rightly said. So uh, our topic is uh, the next layer of conversation to what Gavin uh, spoke about, you know. India embraces the streaming era. Uh, as we have seen the, uh, you know, the insights of the report, uh, uh, we, we all saw, you know, uh, various factors that are driving this uh, growth. And um, so we have a panel that uh, has uh, an agency view, a brand view, and someone from the, you know, Magnite team who has been part of this report. So we'll try to make it more wholesome uh, with these, uh, you know, with this panel, uh, with these conversations. Um, okay, let me start with you. Uh, I'll start with you, Anita. Uh, Anisha, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, what is driving people to watch content on a streaming platform and not the traditional platform? How do you decode this shift? Okay, so I think a part of that uh, was already covered by uh, Gavin in the earlier session. So, um, a few things. One, I think the general variety that exists uh, in the world of streaming is a lot better. Um, the general sense you get is uh, more of the same thing when you turn on television channels uh, as compared to, uh, um, you know, fairly distinct variety that you see when you're on streaming platforms. I also think the liberty of uh, topics on content that you can take uh, on streaming world is uh, slightly better than television. So you can be slightly more controversial, slightly more edgy uh, in the form of uh, discussions or uh, content creations that you can have on uh, um, uh, streaming platforms as compared to television. Um, the third piece and the final piece, I think uh, all of us in some shape or form are victims of it is uh, uh, the erstwhile peer pressure, right? So there's a buzz around you saying, did you watch the show? Uh, did you catch the lingo? Uh, there are phrases moving around and things like that. So uh, part of it is also, I think discovery is slightly more about uh, uh, peer pressure and uh, friends conversations and dinner table conversations and you kind of pick up on that. So better variety for sure. Um, uh, uh, the ability to be edgy uh, in terms of at least the type of content created on streaming platform. And uh, uh, yeah, finally, I mean, with respect to talkability and you kind of be, you are cool when you watch certain form of content. So I think that kind of drives it. Sure. Uh, first of all, sorry for coming late. <laughs> I thought I would miss the entire session. Uh, but I think to answer, uh, they're primarily coming from digital uh, right now. And uh, I'll give you a bit of a framework in terms of how we are approaching the entire OTT piece. So see, in our business, OTT helps in two ways. One, in mass brands, it can help you give incremental reach especially if your chosen media platforms are saturated. For example, sometimes in Hindi heartland, you might want to use OTT to drive some incremental reach. So I think that is one. Uh, second, for premium brands, where you don't actually want to you know, boil the entire ocean, I think the entire DSP works well to channel the deterministic buying and sharply target people whom you want to approach depending on their purchase behavior. So I think, yeah, digital mostly, uh, not a lot right now, which is going in here. So luckily it is not a A versus B uh, discussion, but whatever is going is broadly going in these two buckets, drive reach for the mass brands 
and try and have sharper audiences for premium brands. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty evident from the report and all the learnings from the research that the amount of time spent within streaming is increasing. Now, being a global SSP, we definitely see surge in ad dollars moving towards programmatic, and there are multiple reasons behind it. Today, if we are talking about advertisers, they are embracing programmatic, and there are multiple reasons. It's because of the nimbleness, the agility, the ease of use, and obviously the data-driven buys that programmatic provides. In fact, if we look at the overall spectrum, it solves a lot of traditional TV problems that advertisers have been complaining about, which is about manual workflows, lack of addressability, and limited flexibility. So today, programmatic helps to solve a lot of these problems. When we are talking about agility, right, an advertiser can switch on and switch off a campaign, at a click, they can actually get a campaign up and running within hours time. In fact, if we look at pivoting a message at a moment's notice, that's something where programmatic really works very well. I started my career with Natraj Pencils, where the tagline was Natraj for say champion. Today, if we are talking about sports, live streaming, etc., I think that's where exactly brands want to play, where they want to maximize those opportunities where people are spending time, they have the highest user attention, and that's what they want to maximize. If we look at publishers, um, programmatic provides them complete transparency in terms of reporting. They can optimize the campaign, they can actually increase budgets to reach a particular target audience, and this complete transparency and reaction to the performance uh, is unheard of when we are talking about traditional uh, linear TV buying. On top of that today, when we are talking about programmatic, Magnite provides a curated marketplace, which is premium, private, and again, completely transparent. It gives a lot of visibility to the brands as to where their media dollars are being spent, and uh, they can take real-time calls, whether they want to go with, sorry for some uh, technical terms, they want to do a PG buy or a PMP buy. All the control sits uh, with the advertisers. In fact, Programmatic today provides a platform wherein they can reach out to multiple publishers at one go without individually signing contracts with them. So that's the beauty of programmatic, and that's where streaming is going. Nobody would be happier than me to answer this question. My, uh, my whole career comes from being a digital planner. I know how hard it was to be an afterthought on a media plan to today. Uh, the good news is it is moving, uh, and it's moving fairly rapidly. Uh, from At least from an OMD standpoint, my agency standpoint, we sit at 50-50 today uh, of the split between traditional and digital media. So um, it's a great sign. It's a great sign to where the agency is. It's a great sign to where our brands are. Uh, the 
fact is consumers are there, they're spending time. Um, uh, ROI is incredible if you measure it properly. Uh, so there's really no question why brands, uh, uh, if they aren't already, um, uh, you know, riding on the digital bandwagon. And obviously, um, uh, one of the better ways to advertise on digital is leveraging audiovisual. So uh, therefore, then OTT has, uh, uh, you know, a, a fairly um, uh, a right to succeed in that sense because it delivers to uh, audiovisual messaging. So yes, in short, the answer is yes, and it's fantastic. It's a great question. Are there any categories that are uh, spending more on streaming than others? What are you reading, whatever you have seen so far? Typically, um, uh, audiovisual assets are um, available for most brands, uh, and therefore using them in the digital space uh, makes execution easy. Um, that tends to be one of the reasons on why you will see a lot of video adoption early on uh, for brands, and it's slightly lesser when it comes to, let's say, display, for example, because you still have to think about, uh, you know, various asset forms. So um, most advertisers who embrace digital definitely do audiovisual advertising, or if not all of them. Um, unless you're absolutely very, very core performance oriented, then it's a different business altogether. But all your um, uh, you know, core advertisers or core brands, um, all categories are spending on audiovisual without an exception. Uh, you want me to answer specifically on experience or on content as well? Either? Okay, so let me start with content because I think that's relatively easier to fix, right? Today, when I move my dollars from a TV or from a traditional medium uh, to an OTT platform, I either do it when there is a high ticket event that's happening, let's say an IPL where we've been doing advertising for the last uh, couple of years, or as I said, you know, during some incremental reach. I think the problem that we are facing as someone where brands are, let's say, alive or on air for about 40 weeks a year, that OTT doesn't have an original always on content. And I think that's a challenge. The content that is famous is in and out, right? You have a web series that is there, you see it, you move out. The TV shows that are there are mostly, are also there on TV. So I think one expectation or probably a wishful thinking that I have is that one inflection point that can come is if OTT starts having some original always on content, which for example, someone did it with Big Boss, right? Big Boss came on TV and then they had their own digital uh, segments. Also in and out, but I think one way to make the property slightly longer. So I think that's on content. In terms of experience, see my own experience has been that because the viewer expects the viewing time to be slightly larger when he or she goes on an OTT, he's extremely particular about what he or she wants to watch. So as long as we will not make the medium slightly more interactive, I think we will have this challenge that advertising may come out as a bit of a distraction, right? Uh, you can make it easier by having a skip button, uh, which I don't think is there in, at least on most of the channels. But how do you make viewer spend some more time inside where he is not bothered about what to watch next? I think is probably something that I would expect to happen in the streaming space. Right, uh, for example, the entire chat that happens when IPL is on, I think is a great start. At least you are spending a lot of time by doing something else and not just watching. So something like that I think would, would really help us find avenues to advertise rather than only do it as a pre-roll or a mid-roll. I think, yeah, those would be my two uh, pointers. across now. 
So live stream is uh, getting accelerated, and we see it across the globe, right? And the acceleration is both in terms of uh, the audiences spending time and the media investments happening. Um, in some of the markets, advanced markets, I would say like uh, Australia and US, we see a lot of uh, investments happening around live uh, sports, which is uh, still picking up, I would say, in markets like India. In fact, uh, I would like to quote an example of Magnite's partnership with Channel 7 in Australia. So Channel 7 used Magnite uh, as a platform to maximize the exposure of brands towards audiences involved with Tokyo Games, uh, Olympic Games, and they wanted to kind of do the moment targeting, so the gold medal moments. They wanted to use a partner and a technology, something that we call as live stream accelerator. So, I mean, let's talk about FIFA right now, right? There are going to be moments where the number of consumers watching is going to increase. And there has to be a technology which can support that uh, spike in viewership. So today, when we are talking about live streaming, um, live works very different as compared to catch-ups. In live, suddenly there are spikes, and there has to be a technology which can support the DSPs, the demand-side platforms, and at the same time advertise to maximize that opportunity of connecting with the audiences. It would be very interesting to see how this evolves in India, uh, with cricket obviously being at the top of sports following in India. But as per our research, we are seeing more and more live streaming happening in India, number one. And it's happening across categories like sports, news, and reality shows. Actually, on FIFA, I would comment that we all were talking, and I know there were a lot of issues with streaming. And I mean, let's all agree, it's still in the nascent stage, right? We all need to work together to make that user experience acceptable. What are the opportunities for brands that you see in the Indian context? Uh, um, I mean, just, just your expert you know, insights into this. Look, most brands that you speak to, um, uh, I mean, live sports is captive audiences, it's attentive audiences. Uh, there's no question that it's an incredible space to advertise. Uh, but to Priyanka's point, I think uh, technology needs to uh, catch up slightly better in order for making uh, a brand slightly more comfortable, uh, you know, to manage addressability and uh, um, address that attentive uh, viewing during live sports. So Moments is an example. Um, it could be anything, but if there is a way that, uh, okay, let, let's take a step back. For most advertisers that pick up um, uh, high ticket item sponsorships of live sports on on ground or on television there are a bunch of brands that still want to be associated with sports may not have deep pockets uh, and for them therefore relevance becomes key uh, and relevance can happen in the world of digital but if live sporting opportunities are not targetable then the whole point is moot. Then I'd rather advertise on television if everyone is going to watch it. So if there's technology that helps uh, advertisers who are looking at the digital audiences, um, uh, uh, you know, that you can slice and dice slightly better than you can on mainstream television, um, that would bring a whole new stream of advertisers on live sports on digital, no question. So I would like to add to this point. So today, the data-driven buys that uh, programmatic provides, it basically gives access to advertisers of all sizes, whether those are global advertisers, nimble D2C advertisers. All of them today gain access to the high-quality inventory, regardless of their budget. So 
Let's take an example. There can be an advertiser who has just $2,000 to spend. There is a possibility that using programmatic as a technology, they can increase their CPMs at those specific moments just to gain that share as compared to probably advertisers who could not even think of getting associated with sports in the past. So programmatic opens that huge opportunity for advertisers of all sizes to be associated with sports. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, I actually touched upon it uh, when I spoke, when I gave the first answer. See, the percentage investment is very less. Uh, and especially, I think CPG brands are someone who are always the laggards when it comes to adoption of technology. I'll be very, very honest. Uh, it is normally led by the non, probably tech or D2C brands in terms of any adoption. So low single digit is where it is today. I don't think it's a choice of... Uh, Choosing media right now, Broyal, because uh, as I said, whenever there is a marquee event, we obviously prioritize OTT. And we take out some money from digital just because we are getting the reach from uh, doing OTT. Or in normal circumstances, it comes into use as the third medium after TV and uh, the standard uh, video platforms that you have in areas where we want to build reach. So I don't think at this stage, uh, you really have to worry about the proliferation so much. I think what will help is, uh, as these platforms scale up, right, it, more and more brands will start thinking about not doing it somewhere, not putting up a dollar here and doing it here. Because from a pure scale and cost perspective, they are not right there, I would say. Uh, in terms of where uh, any CPG brand would want them to have. But I think they are on the right track. Uh, probably a couple of years down the line, uh, we surely will see a scenario where people will start uh, giving more preference to OTT than it is right now. For example, tech is something that OTT has developed rapidly uh, in the last two, three years. I remember there was a point of time where you could only buy it on clicks and you had no idea where it's the same people who's watching it multiple times, or is it a genuine reach that I'm getting? But with the help of tech, we are at a stage now that OTT is able to give the kind of data which you would get otherwise. So because that journey has happened in tech, I'm very sure it will happen in other spaces as well. And at that stage, probably it will be a fair a uh, question to ask on, can we really consider OTT as the first port of investment when it comes to digital? That's what I think. Yeah, so today if we look at the two biggest challenges, it's about creating a great ad experience and monetizing all formats. And these are the two challenges where Magnite's tools and technologies are really helping both the publishers as well as the marketers. What we are doing today are enabling uh, different technologies. So, I mean, just to name a few, SSAI, which is server-side ad insertion, Basically, what it does, it, it allows publishers to seamlessly integrate an ad slot into long-form, uh, high-demand content. And it almost replicates the TV-like experience. That's one way of doing it. The second way is that uh, we make everything uh, programmatically available. So today, we let publishers let programmatic demand as well as the direct campaigns compete against each other to maximize the revenue and obviously increase the exposure uh, for the brands when it comes to reaching out to the consumers. 
Another topic that we talked about in terms of tools and technologies is basically LSA, which is kind of like those spike moments wherein the inventory certain increases and how do we basically help the DSPs to maximize um, those moments and make sure that uh, we are maximizing the potential revenue against it. On the buyer side today, Magnite provides a platform which is completely transparent and uh, provides a scalable marketplace. It lets buyers a complete transparency as to where the campaigns are running. It lets buyers apply frequency capping and also creative deduplication and ad separation. These are the different tools basically which is overall helping to improve the ad experience. How does that, uh, I mean, how do you measure, how do they measure, in fact, the performance against other media? How do they perceive that when it comes to OTT performance versus performance on other media? Okay, so, uh, wow. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to find the best way to answer this briefly. Um, <laughs> okay, so two things. Fair. Two things. I think from a media output standpoint, uh, there are fairly well-established currencies today and benchmarks today, and uh, everyone in this room is wise enough to know uh, what the media output um, uh, KPI is that you're measuring. Um, my personal view, and I think as the collective Omnicom view also, if I may say that, is uh, that's not enough. Uh, and I don't think that uh, adds back to an advertiser at all. And, um, you know, Ankit, ha happy to hear your views on that. Um, if we're not able to establish a relationship between any form of media, forget OTT, any form of media, uh, and figure out what that input does eventually to business, uh, then we're all failing in, in the world of measurement. So um, ep media output alone, uh, measuring that and therefore optimizing it in order to get very, very efficient with zero views on what it eventually does for your business, I think is a fairly myopic and a, and a short-sighted view. Um, and, and this applies to every media. I don't think the pressure of measurement is higher for OTT and lesser for somebody else. It's the same. It's media dollars getting invested on any platform. As long as you deliver to business and there is sufficient information that says X input gives me Y output, life is good. So I, I think, I mean, that's the, that's the simplistic uh, version of the conversation. But uh, yeah, some other day. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Uh, and not just environment. Uh, I think anything that they are providing, uh, which the other channels are not able to provide, brands will come. So one, let me give you one example, not in the environment space, but the entire DSP bit, uh, which Priyanka talked about, which moves from a probabilistic uh, targeting to a deterministic targeting. I think it's fabulous for all CPG brands, especially for brands that are slightly small in number and are premium, right? So that's, that's a great way for us to advertise knowing that we are actually targeting someone's uh, buying behavior. So that's a definite go. The other example I have is something that uh, L'Oreal has done uh, with uh, Emily in Paris. Uh, there's a show in, on Netflix uh, where they've decided that we will only advertise on Emily in Paris. Right, and I don't remember the name of the country where they've done it. And I think that is the right example of an environment. Curating the same environment which is there in the show and matching it to the kind of world that the brand also lives for. So if you are able to get such venues, I'm sure brands will come. And I also agree with Anisha that, see, as long as we are only going to talk about price and media metrics, right, it is going to be difficult to move the needle. Because it's a vicious circle, right? Uh, scale and money. 
So until unless scale won't come, money won't come. Until unless money won't get lowered down, scale won't come. So that discussion I don't think will lead us or will lead the advertisers anywhere else. You have to tell them what is the value added benefit that you are getting by advertising on OTT. Either by targeting the right audience uh, or giving the environment in a closed loop manner that the others are not able to give. Because there is enough confidence in CPG brands in general that the platforms work. I think we only need to find out ways of interaction that is mutually profitable to scale it up even further. Yeah, I mean, based on the research that uh, Gavin shared, there is a huge acceptance of ads, number one, on streaming channels. And in fact, the amount of attention that the users are paying to ads on a streaming platform is 3x higher than, say, social media or other form of video advertising. That's number one. Secondly, they understand that value exchange, that they are watching ads because they are getting premium content, which is acceptable. A lot of people who are watching ads are actually doing something in the sense that today, because of personalization, right, people are able to relate. If we show them more and more ads related to what they are interested in, the chances of users reacting to it is high. So there is another technology which is around uh, content transparency. So today, publishers can share uh, content metadata with advertisers. Basically, it helps in ad content matching with the show content, which helps the advertisers to deliver more relevant ads uh, to the ultimate users. So there are multiple reasons why consumers are kind of accepting ads on streaming media. And second, because it's personalized, the outcomes are higher. Panel, so TV format style, quick 30 second answers, Anisha, to you. Uh, looking ahead to 2023, uh, what does the future hold for the India streaming market? I know I'm supposed to give an agency point of view, but I won't. I think I'll give a consumer point of view. I was in Soho House recently, and I met a bunch of people. Believe me, as a consumer, the, the content explosion in this country is looking incredible. Um, please, for those who haven't gone there, please go talk to people. Uh, it's amazing uh, uh, to see the, um, the level of conviction and passion each of those creators there have, uh, you know, in producing amazing content. So I think from a consumer's standpoint, I am super excited. It's, uh, it's just going to be more and more fun uh, moving forward. Okay. Can't agree more. Um, streaming is going to continue in India, and it's um, at the back of, obviously, uh, massive content that is being produced locally, local content, and obviously that huge appetite of consumers to consume content. That's number one. Um, programmatic is definitely going to drive OTT CTV activation in the market. Uh, we are definitely, even though subscriptions might be slightly going down due to, say, inflation, uh, other any macroeconomic conditions, I think online TV is definitely going to edge forward. Um, we as an industry need to come together and create those experiences basically that consumers like and obviously give a lot of confidence to brands that this is the medium to be in. And finally, hopefully brands realize that it adds a complete value in investing in streaming, obviously through programmatic which can help them get scale uh, makes audi audiences uh, addressable, gives them ROI on everything that they are spending. Uh, two points, Rohel. One I think will happen and one I hope should happen. Uh, so the first one, I think the regional OTTs will become stronger. And I think that will happen because they will start differentiating from the bigger ones on the basis of content by being really, really sharp towards a particular language. And I do have a hope that they crack this always on exclusive OTT content in their local channels. So this is, that I think should happen. The second that I'm hopeful is, can some OTT platform actually unlock the kids' genre? 
because it's such a big massive opportunity that somehow no one has really been able to scale up and hence all the kid brands who have the monies uh, are still dependent on going through the traditional ways so i know a couple of people have tried uh, but it has not happened so i am really hoping that especially for kellogs which a lot of uh, business comes from uh, kids brands uh, if that happens i think it will also unlock an extra part of an advertiser's money so, so that genre has to come about to uh, unlock that potential thank you uh, we are out of time but uh, great discussion uh, what i could gather is that uh, you know india definitely is embracing the streaming era that's what all these points uh, you know are you know referring to but thanks anisha uh, thanks priyanka and thanks ankit for this conversation